Good evening, everyone. Welcome to NTD Tonight. I'm David Lamb, sitting in for David Zhang. Here are today's top stories. AT&T said almost all of its customers are impacted by a data breach. Call information is affected, but personal information is not. Wage hikes leading to job cuts and price hikes in California's fast food industry. More on the impacts. President Biden says he's not ready to say bye yet, determined to stay in the presidential race. First up, a massive data breach impacting nearly all AT&T customers. What kind of data was stolen and what can you do to secure your account? AT&T customers, beware. Your call and text records could be stolen in a massive data breach. The company says this impacts nearly all cell customers and wireless network customers. In an SEC filing, AT&T said hackers gained unauthorized access to call logs stored on a third-party cloud platform. They compromised records from May to October 2022 and on January 2nd, 2023. The company said the hackers didn't steal personal information, such as social security numbers, bank information, or dates of birth, so the risk of identity theft or fraud is low. But the hackers could still use the stolen data to force AT&T to pay ransom. The incident raises concerns about cybersecurity, given AT&T has 127 million connected devices. The company has taken steps to address the breach and will notify affected customers. Law enforcement has apprehended at least one person. AT&T said the data is not publicly available, but if you are a customer, you should update your password and monitor your AT&T accounts as well as your bank account for unusual activity. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban met with former President Trump. It's part of what Orban calls his peace mission, aimed at ending the conflict in Ukraine. The two discussed the war in Ukraine and the possibilities of peace on Thursday. Orban is a longtime Trump supporter. In the past two weeks, he made surprise visits to Ukraine, Russia and China, calling it a peace mission. It has angered some NATO and EU allies. Hungary recently assumed the six-month rotating presidency of the European Union. EU officials say the bloc's presidency has no mandate to engage with Russia on behalf of the Union. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is inching closer to getting in on the ballot in all 50 states. He's gaining ballot access in more states, but also facing roadblocks in some states. Indiana, Georgia, New York, and Colorado are the latest states to grant Kennedy ballot access next. His campaign announced they submitted enough signatures to be on the ballot in these states. So far, Kennedy is officially on the ballot in nine states. California, Delaware, Hawaii, Michigan, Minnesota, New Mexico, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Utah. But in North Carolina, the State Board of Elections delayed action for an unspecified time on certifying Kennedy's party. In Nevada, the Secretary of State considered Kennedy's petition signatures invalid in March after initially accepting them. Kennedy has said that he expects to gain full ballot access sometime this summer. Panama wants to stop irregular transit of migrants, many of whom are trying to get to the U.S. The country has now closed several passages into the dangerous Darien Gap. The Darien Gap is a stretch of jungle near Panama's border with Colombia. Authorities have closed irregular access areas with barbed wire. The goal is to reroute people through established border points. The Navy is instructed to stop and retain migrants traveling by boat. They'll then hand them over to police or immigration authorities from Colombia. Panama's new president has vowed that his nation will no longer tolerate transit for migrants. Colombia says the wire boundaries affect commercial exchange with Panama. They suggest this will only increase migration because it negatively affects the economy. Fast food restaurant owners are scrambling to absorb a dramatic jump in labor costs. This after a new California law boosted the hourly wage for fast food workers from $16 to $20 an hour. Let's hear about some of the impacts. Though California's new minimum wage for the fast food industry puts more money into some workers' pockets, it has ignited a series of menu price hikes, mass layoffs, and reduced work hours across the state. So we basically had to raise our prices over about over about 10% uh, in April due to the increase of minimum wage. But people 
we've had to cut back on their hours. We've had to cut back on, on staff and uh, we're trying to accommodate as much as possible. But when the, when the people aren't, the customers aren't coming in, it, it's very difficult to pay for the, for, to pay for the staff to be here. Governor Gavin Newsom signed Assembly Bill 1228 into law in 2023, and it took effect April 1st. The minimum wage for fast food establishments with at least 60 locations nationwide was raised to $20 per hour. Newsom said the hike was necessary to give the state's more than half a million fast food workers a living wage. Long-term impacts from the wage hike remain to be seen, but immediate actions were taken by some establishments as they sought to keep their doors open. We do care for our employees. We know that they are the core and the foundation of our company. And when it, when it comes to having to pay them more, I don't mind that, but we have to understand that it has to come from somewhere. And right now the consumer is saying that they can't afford it. And if they can't afford it, then are we going to be staying in business? The prospect of higher labor costs resulted in thousands of layoffs across the state. Pizza Hut and others announced late last year all delivery drivers in California would lose their jobs before the wage hike took effect. With more than 400 stores nationwide serving 1.5 million customers each day, Walmart Canada has been looking to alternative fuel sources for its trucking needs. The newest addition is hydrogen-fueled electric semi-truck for long hauls. NTD's Helen Billings reports. With the goal to transition to a 100% alternative-powered fleet, Walmart Canada has become the first major retailer within Canada to add a hydrogen fuel cell electric semi-truck to its lineup. According to a press release, they are also the first retail fleet to operate one of these trucks in North America and will deploy the truck in Ontario for long-haul trips. The truck purchased was built by Nikola, an American manufacturer of heavy-duty commercial electric vehicles based in Phoenix, Arizona. Ryan Clayton, Nikola's global head of sales, told NTD, so far, Walmart has purchased one truck. He added that this milestone is a significant achievement for Nikola and underscores their shared vision with Walmart for a zero-emissions future. According to their website, the truck has a range of about 500 miles and takes about 20 minutes to refuel. Its max speed is 70 miles per hour with 536 continuous horsepower and has a quieter operation compared to diesel trucks. Christian Appel, Nikola's global head of product and programs, told NTD that their vehicles can not only meet, but in many cases exceed the requirements of the industry. He said, quote, Drivers and fleets appreciate the spacious, quiet cabin, which is free from diesel fumes and engine vibrations, creating a better and more comfortable work environment. In addition, Nikola has also expanded their reach of hydrogen refueling stations to Alberta, Canada, and Southern California, with new stations opening this year to support high-density areas like the Port of Long Beach in California. Helen Billings, NTD News. The president held a highly anticipated press conference last night at the end of the three-day NATO summit. He said calls for him to step down as the Democratic nominee are premature. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has details on the president's commitment to stay in the race. I'm in this to complete the job I started. President Biden on Thursday reiterated his determination to win his re-election bid and said it was important that he alleviate fears. I'm going to be going around making the case of the things that I think we have to finish and how we can't afford to lose what we've done or backslide. Biden told reporters he has no good reason to talk to Russian President Vladimir Putin right now. He talked about NATO strategies for China and Russia, a boost in defense spending from NATO allies, and military aid for Ukraine. The president also said he's taken three significant neurological exams, the last in February. Every single day I'm surrounded by good docs. If they think there's a problem, I promise you, or even if they don't think it's a problem, they think I should have a neurological exam again, I'll do it. Biden says the only thing age does is help create a little wisdom. He said none of his doctors are suggesting another neurological exam right now. No matter what I did, no one's going to be satisfied. Did you have seven docs? Did you have two? Who'd you have? The president spoke for just under an hour, calling on 10 reporters and answering about 20 questions. His last press conference was in November last year. Biden will campaign in Detroit today and in Texas and Nevada next week. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. 
The European Commission says Elon Musk's social media company X breached EU online content rules. The announcement follows a seven-month investigation under the Digital Services Act. Entity's Andrew Thomas has the latest. The Digital Services Act requires major online platforms and search engines to do more to tackle illegal content and risks to public safety. The Commission said X had failed to provide a searchable and reliable advertisement database. Regulators also alleged that the platform's verified accounts negatively affect users' ability to make free and informed decisions. X will have several months to respond to the charges. If the response is not satisfactory, or if our preliminary analysis is confirmed, the Commission will then have the option of adopting, and this is what we will do if it is confirmed, a decision of non-compliance with the Digital Services Act, which could lead to financial penalties of up to 6% of the platform's annual worldwide turnover. Musk claimed the European Commission offered the platform what he called an illegal secret deal. In a post on X, he alleged that the EU had demanded censorship on the platform or face a fine, and that X didn't accept the deal. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. We'll take a short break now, everybody, but here's a look at what we have for you when we come right back. A former Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist sued in an alleged hit and run that killed a pedestrian. Swimmers wave away the warnings of bacteria at a Los Angeles beach. Gardening and meaningful connections, it's a way of life for some. Daniel Monahan shows us what Philadelphia is doing. Those stories and more coming up on NTD Tonight. Welcome back to NTD Tonight. I'm your host, David Lamb. A former Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist is being sued for wrongful death after allegedly running over and killing a pedestrian in a crosswalk earlier this year. NTD's Christina Corona has more on the story. Josh Klinghoffer, 44, was allegedly driving a black GMC Yukon when he fatally struck 47-year-old Israel Sanchez on March 18th in Alhambra, California. The lawsuit filed with the L.A. County Superior Court by the victim's daughter, Ashley Sanchez, claims the guitarist had thrown and or dragged her father across the asphalt upon impact, where he sustained blunt force trauma to the head and lay on the pavement until medical transport arrived. The suit adds that the family has video evidence showing Klinghoffer on his phone just before the collision. Video footage obtained by TMZ shows the black SUV making a left turn at the intersection of West Main Street and Meridian Avenue. After hitting the 47-year-old, the driver of the SUV pulled over, walks over to the body, then quickly turned around and returned to the car. Sanchez was rushed to Huntington Hospital in Pasadena, where he died from his injuries. However, Klinghoffer's attorneys told news outlets that this was purely a tragic accident and that his client is cooperating with the investigation. Klinghoffer is being sued for negligence and wrongful death. The suit does not specify the amount sought. Klinghoffer is currently a touring guitarist with Pearl Jam. Christina Corona, NTD News. Beachgoers in sunny Los Angeles ignored or didn't notice no swimming warnings on Wednesday and hit the waves. Local health authorities warned of high levels of bacteria at 14 Los Angeles County beaches. The no swimming advisories impact some of Los Angeles' most iconic beaches, including beaches in Malibu and Santa Monica, and come as Southern California bakes in scorching temperatures. No, I, I didn't see anything of that nature. But you know, like I said, uh, like I said, I, I've been coming to this beach for my whole life, and uh, we kind of expect it, right? <laughs> we we expect it to be uh, like that, unfortunately. So you know, you, you so I'm used to it. Maybe I shouldn't go. I don't know. Maybe a warm day. I should go in and, anyway up to here. <laughs> the Los Angeles County Public Health Department is cautioning residents to, quote, avoid swimming, surfing and playing in ocean waters, saying that doing so could cause illness. Higher than usual bacteria levels can be the result of contamination from water runoff and high rainfall. 
Dozens of salmonella illnesses have reportedly been linked to raw milk from a California farm. It's the largest salmonella outbreak linked to raw milk in the past decade in the U.S., according to state records. But the farm is defending its products and says there's no new recall. According to state records, at least 165 people were sickened with salmonella infections as of February. Health officials linked the outbreak to Raw Farm, based in Fresno, California. This is the largest reported salmonella outbreak related to raw milk in the U.S. in the past decade. But Raw Farm said on Thursday that it's been in a battle for years with the FDA and there are anti-raw milk agendas. It said there is no new recall. Our products are safer and more delicious than ever. Health officials told the public to avoid unpasteurized milk due to a bird flu virus circulating in U.S. dairy cows detected in more than 140 herds. Investigators found that 20 people were hospitalized and no deaths reported. In October, officials in San Diego reported about a dozen incidents. At the time, Raw Farm issued a voluntary recall of milk and heavy cream sold between October 11th to November 6th. The owner of Raw Farm said that one cow was infected last fall and later removed from the herd, and they put additional protocols in place in response. In July 2023, the Minnesota Department of Health announced five similar cases. It said that unpasteurized milk or raw milk is milk that has not been heated to a temperature high enough to kill harmful germs from fecal contamination sometimes found in the milk. Symptoms include diarrhea, fever, and cramps. According to the Virginia Department of Health, some people who grew up on farms may have higher immune responses to raw milk and bacteria could be in low concentrations before being transported off the farm. David Lamb, NTD News. The golden days of summer when plants, bushes, and trees offer up abundance in the form of juicy tomatoes, strawberries, apples, and more. Many city dwellers opt to pull these goodies off of shelves instead of picking them off of vines. But cities like Philadelphia are taking a different approach, boasting over 400 community gardens. Entity's Daniel Monahan speaks with the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society about these hidden gems. Adam Hill is the director of community gardens at the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society. He says plot gardening is the most popular among city dwellers. Each family or person will have like a bed or like a, you know, an area that's theirs to manage as they like um, to grow, you know, food or flowers for, for their family. And then there's also like, you know, more uh, kind of common areas. There are also some communal gardens where everyone shares the harvest. In any city, green space is at, you know, a premium and a lot of neighborhoods don't have it. So like a lot of times a community garden is, is the green space in the neighborhood. It is the park, it is the everything. And, you know, I really see it, PHS sees it as, these are like essential community infrastructure where people come together and grow food and feed themselves and be together with their neighbors and, and build community. The community garden director says food is a major motivator. People do eat better when they are growing their own food. They eat stuff that they can afford. Um, they eat stuff that they want to eat that they might not be able to find at the grocery store. You know, they're practicing self-reliance and kind of just like fending for themselves a little bit. And I think that's really powerful too. Hill discusses other benefits of the urban green spaces. Social connections, just being interacting with other people, then like just gardening, I mean, is so important for your health and well-being and getting outside, getting fresh air, getting physical activity and exercise. Philadelphia has a diverse population. Many have roots in Southeast Asia or Africa. One garden that has many participants of different origins is called Growing Home Garden. It's almost 400 raised beds, so like hundreds of families growing there. There's five different language groups. Um, it's like Chen, Karen, Swahili, um, Nepali. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, and I mean, it's, it's chaos at times and it's, like, <laughs> it's difficult, but it's also um, people come together over food. The garden grows a variety of colorful vegetables from African eggplant to Indian mustard greens and bitter melon. Hill says the city is creating a healthier population through these fresh vegetables by running a food as medicine program. We're giving them like a fresh food box every week and helping them cook and, and kind of get them acclimated to, to eating fresh vegetables. And we've seen like big 
um, benefits in terms of their health outcomes um, through that as well. In the heart of summer, Philadelphia's 400-plus community gardens flourish, offering a bounty of fresh produce and fostering community spirit. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. Stay tuned for China in Focus with Tiffany Meyer coming up next. A satellite image is sparkling speculation. Mock-ups of U.S. fighter jets captured in China's desert. Has the Chinese military been practicing how best to attack them? More on China in Focus with Tiffany Meyer at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. That's all we've got for you tonight. We'd like you to join us again on NTD Tonight every weekday at 9 p.m. I'm David Lamb, and that's our program. Have a wonderful weekend.